future trends, deep insights, industry leaders. This is the iGaming Next podcast with your host, Pierre Lint. This podcast is brought to you by Pragmatic Solutions, the leading iGaming PAM platform with a modular approach, including many benefits like a fast, secure, and scalable API-based platform integrated with all major third-party products and services. Make sure you head over to Pragmatic Solutions and join our smart thinking. And hello, hello, Ivan Montik, founder of SoftSwiss. Nice to have you here on the podcast today. How are you doing? Good to hear you, Pierre, and good to see you as well. I'm good, I'm good, thank you. I'm, uh, I'm, in, I'm in nice Berlin with nice weather, summertime, very nice. It's hard to complain. And, and I must say that I appreciate the effort here, my friend, that you have brought a real proper good microphone with you today uh, here to the podcast. Not always that happens. So thanks for the effort. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> listen, Ivan, obviously you're the founder of SoftSwitch, who is um, in the forefront of uh, kind of a crypt, all things uh, crypto related uh, to the agami industry. And, you know, in the last couple of weeks uh, and months uh, on the crypto side of things uh, and also on the stock market and the macroeconomics in general, it's been tough times, right? And, you know, just last week here um, in the time of this recording, uh, Bitcoin is down 35%, uh, Ethereum even more. And the sentiment is starting all over again that uh, you have heard a million times before. So my first question to you is, is crypto dead? <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, and again, uh, you are completely right. So I hear I hear it uh, many many times already during this uh, journey of, uh, let's say, having Bitcoin and crypto uh, in our uh, solutions and working with crypto, earning crypto as well. Uh, so basically, uh, at least five or six times, uh, like li- pretty the same situation we we had already. And uh, every time uh, people were saying to me, and actually in the industry, many, many, many people were saying that now crypto is dead, no future anymore, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe blockchain will be, will survive, but uh, crypto will, as a cryptocurrency, will not survive anymore. So uh, I have two, uh, basically, points uh, to answer on this question. And first point is just to answer from my experience uh, that I gained from uh, 2000, basically 11, uh, where I really were already in the industry of crypto, we're starting to understand it, to, let's say, a little bit mine it, a little bit play with that, a little bit trying to how to use it in the, in the, in the, in the business. And uh, since today, so, and anytime uh, crypto was fall, I've fallen against uh, another crypto, another currencies, uh yes. it was then the time like like we call it uh crypto winter and after yes. that it was a time where crypto was really rolling up and uh, growing uh, very fast so uh today we have pretty the same uh, situation but today actually the situation is even more healthy because uh, we see that not only crypto is falling like bitcoin or ethereum but also like the whole markets and the whole uh, basically economy in the world is uh, getting a little bit in the, into troubles, I guess. Uh, and we will see what, will be, uh, what we will have in the economy of biggest uh, countries uh, in uh, the next uh, four to six months. Yeah. So it's actually a good sign that uh, crypto is following the same uh, signs and the same trends that uh, the markets are following. So it means that we are already in the time where crypto is already there. It will not die. It's uh, just considered as a another uh, asset uh, on the market, right? But I have also a second point for you, and it's also yes. quite fresh. So as you know, like we are working with the as a main our main uh, partner for the crypto processing is the brand uh, Coins Patent Crypto Processing dot com. And we were chatting with the Max, who is a, a CEO of uh, Coinspet. Uh, it was two days ago, yesterday as well. And he said, hey, guys, uh, look, like while crypto is falling, our volumes are growing uh, in terms of transactions. So and this is the, the screenshot of, of the volumes of Coinspet. Uh, oh, wow. Of, 
of the of eighth of uh, uh, June. So basically, uh, in the same trend that we see uh, how the basically Bitcoin, the crypto uh, world, is falling against the uh, let's say USD or Euro, we see another trend in the same direction, but in another. I mean, I mean with the same uh, percentage, but in another direction, how the transactions are growing. So, for example, f- for, the, for, the, for, the, for the processing business, it's, uh, it's much, much better time right now. And I <laughs> guess, uh, and I'm sure, it's the same for the, for, the, for the gambling industry and the gaming industry as well. So, as yeah. lower the price for certain uh, cryptocurrencies is, as more people will willing to use it, for services, for buying goods, etc. So transactions are growing. So this right, is that. Right. So, I mean, uh, if you're if you're considering crypto as a tool uh, or as an asset, uh, we see it's it's there. It's 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 used uh, worldwide, uh, and the transactions volumes are in general like within this uh, 10, 12, uh, 13 years uh, that Bitcoin has been here. Uh, they are growing, so I yep. think yep. I think uh, I know that uh, somebody wants to have Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies uh, uh, dead, uh, but uh, I need to say uh, pretty bad news for them. It will be staying here. It will be growing, and as a technology, it will be anyway uh, overcome the fiat uh, money, the fiat system. No doubt about it. Right, right, right. It's also a hot take, breaking news. Uh, crypto is uh, not uh, dead, then essentially. As, as you point out here, the, the graph that you show for those who are listening is basically a pretty nice uh, upward trending uh, graph in the amount of transactions uh, uh, basically through Conspid, uh, essentially. So people are actually using crypto, not just yeah. as a. Um, as it's a, not as a selling, it's the selling transactions, yeah. like not the sell off transactions. These are like a quite healthy business transactions of uh, within the different services yeah interesting and uh, so so on that note Ivan I mean you you founded Softwits in 2008 and uh, you were very early in kind of adopting uh, the crypto technologies uh, in order to help uh, casinos to uh, to to be able to accept uh, uh, cryptocurrencies as payment solutions back in 2013 I believe and um, you know when I was doing a little bit research on this conversation, I came across uh, an interview that you made uh, in 2012 or something along those lines for 2013. I think, I think it was 2013, like uh, 13. around September, I believe, or yeah. October. Yeah. With, with, uh, and the, the interviewee was a certain Vitalik Buterin, uh, okay. who basically two years later went on to found uh, Ethereum. Uh, and I just thought it was really ironic that uh, he was the one interviewing you. Uh, can can you talk about that uh, interview and and uh, your yeah, sure. connection it with was, Vitalik, it perhaps? Was, it was uh, <laughs> at Bitcoin Magazine, and Vitalik at that time was the reporter or journalist for for them. So, as I understand, he was like uh, from the beginning, uh, or almost from the beginning of uh, creation of Bitcoin. Uh, in this topic, he was interested in it. He he wrote about it as well uh, at that time, like. Uh, you know, the technology was interesting for him and he didn't find, as I understand, any uh, other way as to dig into it and uh, to be a journalist for the for the, for the the Bitcoin magazine. And, uh, you know, like being a journalist, you can talk to many uh, people uh, that are already involved in the in this in this sphere and in, in the market. And yeah so she wa- he was a, a journalist and uh, as i as i say and yeah. we was yeah. we were already in the business <laughs> yeah. And, yeah exactly yeah, yeah the story was so uh, like like that so actually the story of the interview uh, in general was not really let's say positive uh, from the beginning because uh, first it came out bitcoin magazine an article about one of our clients who was using our uh, technology and uh, somebody on the market, like the competitors were claiming that this uh, project is uh, making troubles for other uh, projects, competitors, like in a, let's say, uh, not good way. Let's say that they, they were saying, they were claiming that uh, there is a DDoS attacks against them and uh, this project is doing this and that, and et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> so, and uh, SoftSwiss ma- was mentioned at that time, they're not in a really good way, like uh, 
nobody asks us about uh, are we involved? Uh, do we know something about this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, and you know, like I'm also being a little bit in the journalistic sphere. And when yes. I saw this article, uh, I understand that uh, this article doesn't fulfill uh, the basic journalistic uh, uh, ethic. So basically, if you write about somebody, uh, it's normal that you come to this party and ask like, uh, whether they also have something to share about this, right? So nobody yes. came to us. And then I wrote to Vitaly directly and I said, like, Vitaly, <laughs> uh, I think it's uh, something wrong here because uh, nobody asks us about, uh, no, nobody asks us if even if we want to be uh, published in this article, etc. how we involved in this uh, uh, situation in general. And I said that uh, I think it, 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 it's fair, it's fair uh, from a business perspective and it's, must be uh, from the journalistic perspective that you also ask us and ask our question, uh, our opinion about the situation. And he answered to me and said, yeah, Ivan, you are right. Uh, I apologize about this. Uh, let us do uh, an interview with you, not only on this case, but in general about your business, about uh, how you <laughs> also use crypto in the business, etc. So it's so it came to this uh, situation that uh, we done this interview and it was published and it's still uh, there in the internet. And yeah, and after it was, I believe, in a year or something, at least it was a half, half a year or a year when Vitaly announced that he is going to uh, launch something like Ethereum. Uh, and then Ethereum was launched like, yeah, two years later, something like that. But it was very funny because, uh, you know, I already had some, some connection, some communication. And I, then I, I remember... I, I read about uh, the idea of him and I found it like uh, super cool. I mean, uh, I, I said like, this is the future, 100%. Uh, obviously, some, some, some things that uh, he is going to do are able to, to be done also within the Bitcoin blockchain. But 100%, this is the future of development of the blockchain industry and the cryptocurrencies, etc., etc. So... Um, yeah, this is the story, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I still uh, find the story very interesting, funny, and uh, you know, like yeah. But this is the this is the history of uh, crypto and uh, sources as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, funny how the how the tables have turned in that uh, regard. Obviously, Vitalik is now one of the most famous people on the planet and seen yeah. as a absolute pioneer in the in the crypto space, of course. Uh, but, you know, 2013 was a um, breakout year for Bitcoin in general. It was the year where Bitcoin went from something like $13 uh, and it had this like insane bull run up to like $1,100. And yeah. that was the first time it kind of entered the mainstream to some extent. After that, obviously, it kind of came down a bit. There was a couple of years where nothing happened. It was but, the first, uh, uh, not even the first, but the, I believe already the second uh, uh, time was yeah. of fall. And it was like already, ah, oh, everything is uh, yeah. done. <laughs> we are dead. Yeah, exactly. Crypto is dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it, it was also the year, 2013 was also the year where you launched uh, uh, crypto solutions uh, for the uh, for the agami industry and so uh, you know when did you realize uh, Ivan that uh, Bitcoin specifically at that time uh, wasn't just a fad that it was actually something that was gonna stick around I mean I was uh, I, I was introduced let's say like this to Bitcoin uh, by my friend who is a really geek and uh, computer genie and mathematics genie. And he found this information in 2010, like on forums, and was also trying to play a little bit with that. And he came to me, like, we just were, I don't know, like chatting, uh, like normal friends, like like usual, you know, uh, having some beer. And he said, like, uh, can you imagine there is a technology that uh, make this and this and this? And the possibility is, like, completely super deep and you you can in the future you can do with that everything basically and uh, but first of all of, of course you can use it right now uh, very easy and fast uh, as a payment as a payment method as a coin and yeah i read about that and uh, i heard to him his uh, explanation like he was doing it a little bit from the mathematical point of view not from the let's say economical and uh, real life point of view and at that time, I calculated the 
the the cost of electricity and the cost of the coin etc so and I then I was thinking hmm uh, how this is, is, is technology and system uh, is going to survive if yeah. uh, it's actually a negative uh, it's 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 cost more to mine this as uh, it's coin itself and uh, I forgot for, forgot about this idea for for a while like for a year but 2011 uh, I believe somewhere 2011 uh, between 2012 Satoshi Dice was launched and Eric Kurhis was uh, has launched this uh, project and it was actually first service project like uh, in Bitcoin network and it was basically a gambling a gambling website right and I started to dig into it again and then there, there were some uh, other websites like Dice uh, websites uh, in the market in the industry, but there were no uh, like casinos that I, I call them online classic online casinos with with slots, with live roulettes, with roulettes, uh, digital roulettes, etc. And uh, at the same time, uh, we as a soft Swiss, we decided to like to go into the gaming industry and to develop the solutions for the gaming industry. And uh, I was obviously thinking how we can be unique and how we can find our USP. And uh, I said, okay, guys, we understand the crypto. We, we, know, we understand how blockchain works. We understand the Bitcoin very well, really, like from the security point of view, from the com- economical point of view, etc. Let's implement our own crypto processing. Uh, it was actually only Bitcoin processing solution uh, within our platform. And offer to the market like a platform uh, that business can use uh, to launch a casino, but not only uh, for the fiat currencies, but also for Bitcoin. And decision was made. It was there were several brainstorms, and uh, we decided how we will implement it, how we are going to cover the risks, because we understood that uh, if the cryptocurrency will gone or if any small bug uh, will be found in the system. So we are guilty, not the client is guilty, uh, will be guilty, right? So, and we will not be able to get the money back. So yeah, this was done as well. We put uh, the information on our website, started to do a little bit uh, SEO on this uh, keywords, uh, very few. And immediately, like literally within one week, we've got already requests from different uh, parts of the world, like from Finland, from Colombia, from Japan, uh, the business that was already searching for such solution and we offered this solution. And uh, as, as far as I know, we were the first one on the market. Uh, Coin Gaming uh, launched the solution a little bit later and uh, another company that, that was launching this solution, like a similar solution was uh, called Playforce, I believe, and it was like a, a year uh, after. And they are, then they were not really, they didn't manage to survive from the market and they closed. So, yeah, and I think it was a dis- destiny for us and uh, the decision was made. And uh, that's why actually Soft Swiss at that time get uh, this attraction uh, from the industry. And I remember at ICE 2014, uh, when the first Bitcoin seminar was uh, happening there and we were sponsoring uh, this Bitcoin seminar at ICE Totally Gaming. And uh, then we had an interview and I was coming to the interview and somebody, uh, I believe it was a SB, SB Tech uh, CEO, but I can I, I can be wrong right now. Uh, the guy that uh, never saw me uh, actually before, I, I also never saw him before. And he, yeah. he, we, we met each other in this interview room and said, "Hey, hi, I'm, 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 I'm this, yeah." And I said, "I'm, I'm, I'm Ivan." Uh, I said, "Ah, uh, Soft Swiss, you are the biggest crypto pro, uh, crypto supplier in the industry. Yeah, well done." And I was, "Wow, I mean, <laughs> people already know us. It's very nice from the industry and the big, big name. So cool. So yeah, this is yeah. this is this was very exciting for me." Yeah, yeah, ex- exactly. I mean, you you pioneered it, obviously in the right time in the right place, uh, and then on top of that, obviously having the uh, the technical know how and expertise in order to pull this off. Uh, and you know, so so that has been kind of the foundation for Sosweet's uh, success and identity over the last uh, eight or nine years or so. 
And you know, like putting the the tape forward now to 2022 and looking at crypto payments from a regulatory point of view. Um, it seems to me that uh, regula regulators are slow to adopt uh, and uh, kind of cater for new technologies in general, and uh, you know, crypto being being one of them, um, and they're kind of stifling innovation in that respect. Like, w why do you think that regulators are so slow to adapt to specifically crypto payments, but also new technologies in general? No, I think uh, there are several. Uh basically factors why why it's happening uh, and while i know that there is an interest and there was an interest uh, for the new technology for the blockchain technology from the regulators but uh, apparently as i as i see it now uh, there were some also like progressive guys let's say within the some regulators that were uh, really fond of this technology and they wanted to do and to, to change something uh, within the regulation, and I can even uh, name the the countries. Uh, I was I was I was quite uh, closely talking to, or better to say, he was talking to me with the uh, guy. Who, I, I don't remember right now the names, but uh, from the Spanish Gambling Commission, it was 2016 and uh, 17. The guy was uh, talking to me. Then we were we were having uh, some uh, video calls as well with the with the other. Uh, commission uh, members and they were really fond of uh, blockchain they somehow at least they expressed that they wanted to, they were they were willing to somehow implement uh, this technology and upgrade their regula regulation um, after my speech at uh, EIG in Berlin it was uh, 2016 I believe as well uh, guys from Canada regulation from uh, Denmark uh, came to me as well and said, "Okay, first of all, thank you that you explained the blockchain technology and how it works in the simple words. And second, uh, here are our contacts and uh, we, will, we would like to cooperate with you guys. But for now, we understand we, it's too early for us, but still we're interested. And if you will be uh, like in Copenhagen and in Canada, Montreal, Please uh, give us a note, and we will meet you, and maybe we will discuss internally like how it could be. Uh, but the the whole idea is that uh, I believe it's you know like there are few people of that kind that in the regulators that really understand the the technology. It's not about only the gambling regulators. It's about everything. It's about even bankers. It's about financial systems, financial regulations. Uh, there are few really people, uh, if any in these uh, government structures, let's say like this, that really understand the benefits uh, that can gain uh, not only the industry, but the government as well. And the benefits that can make uh, the industry, the responsible gambling, really safer and really more responsible. And I can tell you, uh, it was a discussion, a panel discussion, I believe 2015, and also in uh, in London and totally and at Ice Totally Gaming show. It was another seminar uh, about Bitcoin and gambling, etc. But it was already the second one, and uh, the interest was there. And there were uh, guys from uh, UKGC, uh, and they were already like. Uh, thinking to somehow implement the cryptocurrency uh, within their in, uh, infrastructure and regulation, and they did actually after. But uh, the discussion was about the IML and uh, the responsible gambling. Uh, I said at that time, like, guys, if you really want to make gambling responsible and safe and uh, you want to make it absolutely uh, money laundering friendly, let's say like this, I mean, anti-money laundering friendly, uh, you should actually force all your uh, regula reg regulation and all your uh, basically uh, operators within the regulated market to use cryptocurrency. But not in the, just like a Bitcoin, for example, but uh, maybe to create some, uh, let's say, government wallet or partner with some company that can do it. And this wallet can be attached to any player who wants to play, who wants to gamble, who wants to make bets, who wants to play poker, etc. And you can, as a, as a, as a UK uh, GC, 
launch your own coin, actually, that will be only accepted for, for, for play on regulated uh, operators. And uh, in this interface where you uh, sign up the player, when you check his KYC, check his uh, source of funds, whatever you want to check, you already know that this player is safe, uh, clean, and he buy, for example, the coin for pounds, uh, and he use this coin only to gamble within the regulator, regulated uh, environment. No other fiat currency is accepted. And in this case, you will have absolutely super good uh, business environment because the, the operator doesn't have them to check all these kind of papers uh, to ask, to control, and blah, yeah. blah, blah. You do you it know once that, and, um, yeah. yeah, and then you, you can operate the across operators. Yeah, you control the player on the on the on this wallet side basically, and if you think uh, or operator can report to you that the player is having some problems, uh, gambling problems, etc., you can even block him on the on this on this side. You can basically control more or less his coins. It could be yes. centralized, it could be decentralized. It's a, another question. But in an ideal world, uh, you could base you could ba you could basically uh, give his money back to him in in pounds, for example, right? So. Yeah. Uh, obviously, this system could be uh, set up in a little bit uh, more sophisticated way, as I discuss, as I t uh, tell right now. But this discussion was like, uh, and they couldn't uh, answer me. They couldn't say, "No, you are not. You are you are not right. Uh, you are not correct." And blah blah blah. So they couldn't uh, argue with me at all. So, and uh, on this perspective, I mean, I think that they really don't understand uh, right now uh, one side and also but probably they even don't understand the other side, the, the gambling side as well right now. It's like, um, so yeah. and this is the problem, I think. And this yeah. is the, the problem of many countries uh, for now. But I, uh, I could also bring, uh, in my opinion, at least for now, for this point of time, a, a good example of, of the regulator. So let's take Estonia. Uh, they have the gambling regulation, they have the crypto regulation, and within this gambling regulation, they basically have a marriage between the crypto and the gambling because it's one 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 country, one system, right? One financial system, and they allow to use crypto, and there is no uh, much like uh, not not so sophisticated and not not so. Uh, uh, you know, hardcore uh, to use the crypto for gambling as it is, for example, at the UK GC. I don't think even know if they still have this possibility in UK uh, to make deposits with the Bitcoin. But once they did it, uh, I believe it was 2017 or something like that. It was a nightmare. So you, you literally, you, you will never uh, use Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency to do this because they did it so much uh, hardcore uh, for the player that uh, only idiots could could, uh, could use uh, crypto yeah. for for gambling. Yeah, yeah, and, and um, I suppose the uh, the reason why the regulators are so slow to adopt new technologies is, as you point out, that uh, they don't. First of all, they perhaps don't understand it to the same level as you do, and um, regulators are, I suppose, by nature, a very conservative. Uh, kind of organizations that are being more careful than they than they should perhaps. And on the other side of the table sits Ivan Montek, you know, a hardcore entrepreneur and forward-thinking uh, visionary, so to say. And and um, like the the, uh, the kind of risk-averse nature of of the regulator, I suppose, is uh, why they are just uh, being very slow to adopt uh, this technology. But do you see that there is kind of like a light at the end of the tunnel uh, here? Do you think uh, th there are certain regulators that are moving towards uh, accepting crypto in, in some uh, acceptable manner? Or do you think that it's up to you as SoftSuite, for example, to be uh, innovative uh, in, order to, uh, in order to try to provide these solutions in regulated environments uh, in some other ways? So basically, it's a, it's a, uh, you know, it's a road of, uh, from, from both sides. So like we, we should go uh, to each other from both sides and understand each other. Uh, right. I mean, not only us as, as sources, but in general, the business, right? And uh, yeah. obviously, you are correct that uh, in the regulator, uh, 
government structure, maybe there are, there are no people that uh, really understand it or really understand it in, in these details that uh, you need uh, to implement some new uh, updates in the regulation. But uh, it's the same in any other industry, like logistic, uh, like banking, like other industries. Uh, and that's why usually business talks to the government and government talks to business and they find uh, solutions and they take experts and these experts also uh, share their opinion. And then we have like uh, some upgrades, some, uh, you know, like uh, improvements of the regulation of any of any businesses. Um, yeah. But yes, uh, we are trying to, let's say, penetrate the regulators a little bit with the yeah. <laughs> with this crypto <laughs> topic. And uh, in this re- in this um, in this regulated markets, local markets, where we are right right now, are more active as in any other. Uh, we also touched the the question about the crypto, but. My uh, honest opinion is that only cryptocurrency is a currency uh, to use uh, in regulated markets. It's not really the main, uh, you know, like problem and the main uh, desire. You have to basically upgrade the whole uh, infrastructure and you have to make it faster to make it, as I told you, like uh, from the operator point of view, less uh, uh, bureaucratic, bureaucratic. So the, the let the operator make the, their business and uh, make the gambling also responsible. But on another side, don't uh, put on the regulator uh, too much stuff that is not related to business at all. And it's it's not about the gambling industry. It's about the banking as well. For example, right now to open a bank account to uh, support the bank account all the time to maintain it. You always should, you know, like do this QIC checks, uh, source of wealth, source of funds, and blah, blah, blah. And to create new companies uh, in any jurisdictions, you should pass like a hell of uh, different procedures. Uh, but yeah, these procedures yeah. are so complicated only because you have to get papers to certify these papers, to apostille these papers, to send this by DHL, by UPS, etc. You know, like if it's done, if and it could be done, everything to blockchains, the life of people, the life of business will be much, much easier from one side, and obviously the economy of the countries will be growing up much faster because in general the the turnover, the the whole this procedure will be faster and easier. So yeah, I mean, you know, we have only twenty four uh, hours in a day, and if you can spend more time for papers and more uh, less time for papers and more time for business it gives you immediately an effect an, an, an economical effect uh, of uh, additional value in the industry in the economy in the macro economy as well yeah 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 fair enough it's a it's a, it's a good point we uh, as a society we we want to seek ourselves to be more efficient uh, and less bureaucratic. Uh, essentially, yeah. that's uh, that's the point here. And w- w- would you say that this is uh, one of uh, Softwit's kind of key um, ambitions at the moment? It's kind of how to support the operators in regulated environments uh, on on this side, and how to kind of try. drive will, this uh, we'll push of technology. Yeah, we try, we try, but again, it starts with the talking and communication with the regulators, uh, also with some. Yes. With some with some people that uh, already have some experience working in these uh, markets, not only even in online but in offline business as well, so they can basically maybe be more, let's say, uh, serious opinions opinions uh, for the regulator as uh, as we are. Uh, and uh, if I tell if I say we are, I'm not I don't mean uh, only soft Swiss, I mean any online business. You know, like uh, for many regulators yeah. still. Online businesses, they are the, the, these are freaks uh, from uh, you know like internet that uh, somewhere somehow launched casinos uh, online uh, and started to make uh, money out of that. And uh, today it's a lot of money, right? But we trust more these guys who were working with us like thirty years and forty years here on the uh, on the ground, and we will listen to their opinion. So basically, it's also important then to. Uh, connect like online and offline and opinions and make these discussions, make this uh, share of uh, knowledge also with offline operators and, uh, you know, 
and using them also as a as a as a opinion leaders in, in these certain countries uh, to to transfer and to 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 deliver this information to the decision makers in the in the in the regulators in the governments. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, if you were to uh, to guess, Ivan, like how far away are we from crypto payments becoming standardized in the regulated environment? And obviously, it, you know, it, it's obviously going to be very much up to the individual regulators, of course. But uh, let's say, uh, how far do you think uh, we are away from at least some major regulated jurisdictions adopting uh, crypto payments? I think uh, the main... Uh issue and the, pr- the main problem or blocker will be the banking infrastructure like the 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 like fiscal infrastructure of the of the countries uh, once they will move to the crypto adoption like uh, already like uh, with the open eyes and with the open uh, doors uh, we will see the adoption uh, i believe also in the gambling industry and so on and so on and I know that for, for sure, I'm not. Sure, I'm, I know for sure that uh, right now the biggest names uh, in the banking uh, sphere they are already confident that crypto and the blockchain technologies uh, have or must 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 uh, to be integrated into their infrastructure, and they understand also that if they don't do this. It will be done by somebody else, so and they will lose their market share. So uh, I'm quite confident, and I have this uh, insights uh, that is going on already. So, but how much time it will take? I, I guess uh, nobody can answer this question, but I hope uh, that we we will see another five years of adoption of you know like uh, understanding it, and maybe in five uh, years or so we will see at least. Not the fully adoption already on the of the, of the technology, but uh, a fully, uh, let's say, adoption in the minds of the technology, and then we can see the fast track of implementing the technology into our uh, lives. And uh, yeah, what we yeah. used to know, like only in our industry or small dot com industries uh, operations, we will see within, I believe, all our uh life uh angles let's say like this yes 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 and, and 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 the gaming and gambling will be one of these one of them. yes 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 absolutely uh, you know looking at it from the operator's point of view uh, as well uh, you know we, we've obviously seen the the rise and rise of uh, uh, operators like state.com coin gaming rubet and so on and so forth um but the major op- kind of traditional operators, especially those who are kind of publicly listed and so on, um, as far as I know, none of them have adopted crypto payments uh, to uh, so far, I would say. And you know, w- what are what's the sentiment within the kind of tier one operators uh, to uh, to to uh, to launch uh, crypto payments? Are they eager to uh, to 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 kind of uh, be able to uh, to start uh, accepting crypto payments uh, are they also being too careful in this uh, like are they willing to you know be innovative and kind of take a risk uh, or like how how is your conversations with the uh, with the tier ones like- there, are, there, are, there are two uh, two sides here so from one side they want to follow the trends and they want to be uh, let's say better than other competitors right and uh, yes. as, as as more you can do uh, uh, in innovation uh, side, as better you will be seen from the player's perspective. On another side, they have these uh, like uh, issues that I mentioned uh, before. You know, like regulator, they don't understand uh, too much risk, potential uh, money laundering problems. Uh, despite my opinion, that uh, much more money laundering could be happen uh, within the fiat industry as in the game, as in the crypto, but still they believe in it. Uh, public listed, so how will be the you know the, the public uh, opinion about this? How will share move? Uh, so if I if I if I make something with blockchain uh, and I will call it blockchain probably my shares will be go up. If I do something with cryptocurrency, probably my shares will be go down. So, and this is this, you know, like hustle and bustle within their heads, but uh, obviously it's a tough decision to make. 
And without the regulator, you can't make this decision. And we saw even in Malta, you know, like MJ uh, and uh, FSA, uh, they wanted to, 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 to allow to use crypto, I believe, like three or four years ago already, at least. Yeah. And there were sandbox for that. There were some yeah. regulation for that. Still nothing. And for now, uh, I know that the MJ is like, okay, maybe somebody would uh, be the first and would try, uh, maybe several operators. But I don't think uh, within the current uh, paradigm, what they uh, have right now, anybody need it. So, uh, I mean, why you would need right now to accept crypto under the MJ license if basically almost all European countries are already uh, local regulated. And it means either yeah. you accept money, let's say from, uh, I don't know, France or Italy uh, in crypto, which will be considering as a legal operation from their perspective, maybe not from the MJ perspective, uh, if you take European Union, but from their perspective and then get into troubles also, if the MJ will don't understand something in the future while it's already ongoing, they will make you more troubles, ask you more information and where this money comes from, ask uh, what is blockchain, how you can see, how you can track, uh, track uh, Bitcoin transactions, oh, and what was the, this transaction in the blockchain, etc. So why the operator will, will, will need to use it right now when the regulator doesn't understand it? So uh, from this perspective, I don't think it's uh, right now business-wise interesting for the operators uh, to start using uh, cryptocurrencies. But again, when we are talking about the whole infrastructure will be changed, not only the payment solution, but uh, as a general solution for responsible gambling, for even uh, track of... Uh, bets and wins uh, that could be down i mean seen immediately in the blockchain uh, even from the taxation office uh, perspective they can easily track uh, the amounts of your volumes and see how much basically taxes they will already collect next month uh, or even they could collect it online so basically it could be also done like that so this is the way where we should go and then it yeah, will be yeah. interesting for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, uh, in general, I want to have an update on this because um, I've been listening in on uh, quite a few uh, kind of investor calls for for major operators, and I remember especially for DraftKings, the uh, investors are always curious to know when is DraftKings going to accept crypto and stuff like that. And so, so uh, the sentiment is very much that. Uh, yeah, investors, everyone wants this to happen. And even DraftKings wants this to happen. Other operators want this to happen. But as you are saying, uh, the, uh, the, the, the regulators is um, uh, the, the issue at the moment. I mean, just th that begs the uh, just kind of, a, I guess, a little bit separate question. But it feels almost like, you know, in, especially on the um, European side, the, uh, there is a lot of headwinds for the operators in general, not just from, you know, not being able to uh, accept crypto, but uh, uh, regulators are uh, being very conservative towards the uh, agami industry in Europe. You know, take the classic examples like Germany, Sweden, UK, Netherlands. It's becoming very difficult to operate in those markets in a, in a regulated environment. Yeah. Um, do, do you think there is any room for growth left, left in these markets? And, and I guess a follow-up question to that as well is like, uh, it feels almost like the industry is shifting from you know, being excited about markets regulating to looking into kind of the dot-com markets again? Like, do you get that feeling as well? I mean, this is actually a normal feeling. It's not a feeling, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fact. It's a matter of fact. Because, uh, you know, uh, when you have uh, something in your, in your environment that is uh, willing to do something and you forbid to do something, they are starting to search for the ways how to do something. Yeah? Yes. So basically, it's very simple said, but uh, it's the same. Like, uh, first of all, the the regulators is my, as, as I see it, it's not only I see it, it's many, many seniors guys from the industry have the same opinion. They are not willing to regulate. They're willing to 
uh, completely kill the industry. So yes. the, 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 the desire is to basically stop the online gaming at all or make it like so uh, complicated for the operator, for the player, that they are not, uh, they, 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 they will lost, uh, um, lose this uh, idea even to, to play, you know. But they don't understand the simple things somehow. I mean, all they understand, but they play with that. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's some just a political tool uh, that it's impossible to stop people in nowadays uh, to gamble, you know, like and uh, to bet. And uh, I mean, whatever you will do today, it's impossible to stop this industry. It's uh, it's a very old industry, and people will gamble uh, since I believe the the world has exist. And uh, it's in a human nature. It's normal. Obviously, we should control, uh, and this is the regulator uh, must done must do uh, to control the the level of you know like of this gamble. Let's say not that, that, that the people are not going on another side and not getting into this uh, crazy stuff like uh, losing everything, like like uh, also families after and uh, getting into social troubles. But this is the regulation. And uh, if you forbid forbid something, you will not be succeeded. And that's why I'm talking also about connecting uh, offline and online and talking to this, uh, let's say, old, I even can uh, say like dinosaurier guys uh, from the gambling industry, from the hardcore land base, because they still have a lot of lobby uh, in the in, in this in these countries. And uh, I mean, even if I talk about Germany. Obviously, there are two companies that, from Austria and from Germany that are lobbying uh, the current regulation, and everybody yeah. understands it. Everybody understands it, but yeah. it's done anyway. The first license issued to this company of these two, two guys, and everybody understands that two guys are just want want to protect uh, their offline business yes. by killing the online business. That's it. So, but. Very few of uh, the players are doing something again. I mean, I mean, in terms of the legal procedures, in terms of the communication, in terms of sharing uh, the information that these two worlds are not uh, like uh, closing each other. These two worlds can uh, live together, like online and offline. So yeah, so we do this. We should do this work, and we should uh, push and push and push our ideas. And I guess. Uh, Somewhere these two points will come together in one point, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yes, Ivan, that's super interesting on, on that note as well. And I, I suppose just to, uh, just to change uh, the direction a little bit as well on the conversation, you know, um, in our company, we have two main uh, investors, which are uh, Robin Reed of Happy Hour and uh, Tim Heat of Coin Gaming and Yolo Group, of course. And yeah. as you just talked about uh, now previously here, uh, as in, like, if you if you can't work together with the regulator in the regulated environments, uh, the, this uh, innovation will take place outside of the uh, uh, of the regulation. And, and um, you know, looking at uh, kind of the the recent Web three metaverse NFT uh, trends that have popped up in the in the last year and a half or so, um, Tim Heath and Robin Reed are two good examples of individuals who are really forward thinking. And um, they are trying to innovate in the casino industry, uh, especially on the Web3 side of things uh, with, um, uh, with kind of NFT and DAO kind of Defy. casino products yeah. and, and, uh, and metaverse, uh, like a true casino metaverse, uh, stuff like that they are looking into. Um, so my question to you, Ivan, is uh, kind of on the Web3 uh, side of things, um, do, do you see that there potentially could be uh, a disruption of the agami industry um, based on these new technologies that are that are cropping up uh, and if so how do you see the industry being disrupted by web3 no i mean i, I think it will be uh, existing in the parallel worlds right now at least and i i, I need to mention that actually uh I really support the ideas, and uh, I think the, the, these guys are doing great job, uh, like Tim and Robin. And I'm fully uh, join them uh, mentally and uh, idea wise and, and business wise as well. And uh, this is how the business should actually be, 
business should be always upfront uh, the regulation the the government etc so it's never uh, it's actually it's a good it's a, it's a, it's a bad sign if the business is following the regulation I mean, not in right, terms right, of the, right. they don't want to be regulated, but in terms of the rules. So business should be uh, always be upfront. So it, business should, should, should be created, the ideas should be created, should be innovated in this way that the regulator should follow the business, not the business should follow the regulation. So from yeah, this yeah, perspective, yeah. I That's think it's a completely right way to go. And uh, it, another question, how uh, the governments and I don't know, politicians will uh, consider this, you know, but let's take an example of um, um, social gaming in Facebook, for example, Slotomania and all this kind of uh, casinos. These casinos are actually there for already like uh, more than a decade uh, after US banned the, 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 the gambling, the online gambling. I mean, this industry was born, right? And actually, they, if you consider it uh, really uh, with, with any, any, any pieces of, of this business, you can understand that it's the same behavior of gambling. And it's, it's actually, it is gambling, you know. But uh, in, in, instead of paying out uh, some amounts of money and instead of uh, offering people like uh, normal RTP and mass 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 based uh, chan- game, game of chance, they offer them like uh, actually uh, falsificated uh, gameplay, uh, adopted to their uh, behavior, to their social status, and etc. etc. And you can win obviously there. Uh, but not the real money as it is, it is, it is that, but uh, some goods, some services, some, you know, some, uh, some awards um, that also have a value. Uh, but in the same time, the player, he really can't win. So he spent money, real money, but he can't yeah. really win the real money back. And I think it's a completely uh, like turn it, I mean, it's it's even worse than the normal uh, gambling Not because sure. because you you with the gambling uh, websites you come to the website and you understand okay this is the mess this is the game of chance I can really win uh, I can really lose right when you go to the social casino you you understand I can really uh, lose but actually I can't win right. So, and it's not a mess, it's just uh, somebody on this other side is playing with me. So, from this perspective, I think uh, it will be considered maybe this metaverse casinos, this uh, even crypto casinos, pu- pure crypto casinos, they could be considered also as uh, social casinos because it's the same. I mean, uh, okay. If, okay, if it's Bitcoin, maybe Bitcoin considered as an asset in some countries. But if it's like Shit coin, let's say like this. Some completely new coin, you don't know how it's structured, etc. But it, it works. Uh, why uh, it's not the same that uh, social gaming, right? Exactly. Yeah. So I that's, think that's a great point. That's yeah. a that's a really good point because as you're saying, this coin that you play with in you know whatever it may be, the, the uh, social casino would be considered the same thing. It's a it it, it it's a coin. Whatever, but this, what you're saying here is you you have this shit coin or meme coin, yeah. Uh, and what's the difference between the two, other than you can just transfer it between no players? Let's say with Facebook, you get these tokens and these uh, coins. Also, like this, uh, they are also virtual. But uh, if you want, I believe you can exchange them uh, to the real goods as well. And again, yeah. there are real prices like cars, like uh, cruises there, etc. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> there is no different, but uh, it's. It's a the big difference yeah. for the player because uh, using these new technologies and new metaverse casinos and Web 3.0, 3, 3, 3, 3, 0, uh, they get this uh, feeling back, you know, like they are not uh, stupid uh, and they understand what's, what's gambling and what's not gambling and where they are uh, foolish and where not. So, and so basically the industry is giving this feeling back, first of all, and second of all, uh, the industry allows the player to get much more fun out of this play because 
we can innovate. We can put a lot of stuff uh, in terms of the innovation, in terms of the uh, uh, gamification, and all these new t- new features that uh, player actually likes. And you know, the the competition is always uh, helping to get better service and get better products and uh, deliver these products and the services to the players. And in any industry, if you if you are only one car seller. You will do probably uh, maybe first year very good cars, but then there is no competition there, and you will do shit cars because they will anyway be uh, bought by by the by the customers. Yeah. But if there are ten uh, of the producers or hundred, obviously everybody will uh, work under like yeah. engine and uh, you know like uh, everything like in the shape and everything, and to make its product better and to compete. So and who wa- who yeah. win uh, the customers are winning and this is like a this is the alphabet of of, of business in, in general like uh, it was centuries of years ago and it is now in a more better even uh, perspective right now so i think uh, the player will win actually and uh, the regulators will need to either adapt uh, to the new world yes. te- technological world or yeah. i don't know like oh i don't know what they, they they should do then if they don't uh accept it say like this yeah ex- exactly and i i love what you are saying in that uh, regulators should follow the businesses not the other way around they should not be businesses who follow the regulators and kind of um breaking ground as a business and uh, try new things uh, is essential to uh, to make progress and i suppose the uh, the goal of a regulator should be to 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 uh, to not fall behind too much from the innovation that is taking place, right? So they want to be as close to the um, to the innovative spirit as possible, uh, so that it doesn't kind of yeah. the regulation doesn't fall behind for too long, which is kind of what has happened. They should they should give this possibility to the business to compete, uh, to yes, innovate. Yes. Uh, right. to to invest actually to invest in the technology uh, rather to invest in their pockets you know uh, yeah. because if you if everybody are uh, equal and so you 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 don't invest in the technology because you don't have to to to, to develop the technology because you don't have the chance to use the technology yeah. because the regulator doesn't allow it so basically exactly. the circle closed yeah um, who win nobody Actually, I see yeah. it from this perspective like regulator is a small uh, example of the of the of the government of the country. So, what in my opinion the government should do, and uh, many you know uh, books this is uh, written, is to uh, play the role of uh, of the of the entity that uh, oversee how the business, how the people are living in this country. And uh, make these uh, controlling points uh, that one person not uh, basically hurt another person or its interest. So basically, that you have everybody have equal entrance entrance to all uh, possibilities of the country. Let's say like this. So they don't have to be uh, somebody who is in this. Uh, gameplay, let's say like this. They have to be around, and they have to just to see. Aha! Uh-huh, here is the problem. Potentially, here could be uh, different positions, different uh, you know marketplaces uh, of the of the companies because of that and that. So we need to put this rule and this rule. Then everybody is playing in the same uh, equal uh, environment, and then we created the environment for the growing, for the business, for you know, for living, for you know, for using the lakes in the in the country, for using uh, forests in the countries, uh, etc. So the government shouldn't be somebody who is punishing uh, somebody, you know, like only okay. and just to get money out of it. Exactly. And, and to solidify the point and just to showcase that uh, at least we are not the, the only industry that is uh, suffering from hard regulation. Uh, the um, Elon Musk with uh, Tesla uh, moved his factory from uh, California to uh, Texas, uh, the, 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 new, uh, the, the new factory that they have built uh, over there. And he, Elon Musk talks about 
the fact that there is so much regulation in California that is <laughs> almost impossible to innovate in the um, in the in the car manufacturing industry. And he makes a really interesting point in the fact that regulators are very good at adding regulation, but they are really bad at removing regulation. Exactly. And um, the principle for a functioning society should be that if you if you add uh, one piece of regulation, you have to remove one piece of regulation. Because if you don't do that, eventually you'll get to a point where uh, innovation is impossible. If you just add and add and add, and add. like where does it stop eventually? Right. And that, that's the problem with the regulators today. Is um, you know it goes to the point where uh, regula- re- where innovation is just completely stifled in society in all areas. And I think we see that in society to some extent. Yeah. 100%. Uh, I mean, actually, I really also like fond of uh, Elon Musk and he, he, he did yeah. already a super job uh, with many companies that he created or he joined. And uh, yeah, this guy is absolutely uh, an example how the real businessman uh, should be, should act. Should act. Uh, and you know, like how he did it uh, with the with the factory also in Germany. Uh, I live in Berlin, so yes, the, the, the factory is not far uh, from myself. I mean, from the from Berlin, and I also drive Tesla. I have Tesla, <laughs> so oh, there you uh, go. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> uh, I completely, I, I completely support this uh, opinion, and uh, you know, even. Again, uh, maybe not the fair example from my side because being uh, uh, like live uh, who, who lives in Germany, but still German uh, taxation uh, system is the most difficult in the world, and uh, I guess that one of the one of the one of the answers why is that uh, they really they they put more and more and more and more points but they don't yeah. uh, cut the old points that actually doesn't make sense or maybe uh, they they basically do the same or did the same before what the new points do and they, sometimes they are controversial so uh, yeah i completely agree with this yeah. uh, statement and uh, actually I would say it, I, I completely agree with the most of the statements that Elon Musk is, is doing. <laughs> <laughs> Albeit so controversial, but uh, he's uh, he's entertaining too. All that's uh, that, that's yeah. for sure. Uh, <laughs> being so, being so uh, to, the richest, richest man in the world <laughs> for, for a reason. It. Yes, that, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. And to talk about uh, a person who is uh, not scared of taking risk uh, and to. Yep. Uh, to challenge the uh, the regulators and going uh, head on, uh, you know, he doesn't care. Like uh, yeah. he feels he is above the regulators. And COVID was another example of that, where California wanted to shut down the Gigafactory. Uh, he just basically said, you know, f you to uh, to the regulator. He continue to operate the the business. I just, <laughs> yeah. you know, you say know, what you will, but it's a it's a brave would, move. If he would follow the all requirements to build the factory here in Germany. The factory wouldn't be opened yet, and uh, maybe another two, three, five years. But he said, yeah. "Okay, I think we can do this, this, this. If it will, it will be wrong. We will uh, pay fine, uh, but we will be yeah. fast." And uh, <laughs> he did it, you know? Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Uh- so Ivan, this has been a really interesting conversation. It's uh, it's been a really interesting. Like I've been wondering a lot what's going on on, on this side of uh, the the industry. What's kind of what's the latest update on the uh, on the crypto side? Being able to uh, accept uh, payments for, as an operator on the crypto side. So it's really interesting to have a good uh, update on that front. Uh, I guess my last question to you, Ivan, is uh, kind of what's next for Softwits uh, uh, now? Like uh, obviously you you are you are a massive company these days, so more than a thousand employees and. Um, uh, you are leading the, uh, the kind of innovation on the crypto payment side, and uh, a lot of exciting things are happening on your front. But what's next for the for the for yourself and for the company? No, I mean we want only not only to lead and to innovate in the crypto space, but also in the real money space. Let's say like this. And uh, yeah, I mean we are following our way. Uh, we create uh, more and more uh, applications and products that uh, we think uh, substitute some of the. Uh, existing ones, but uh, that are lacking some, you know, uh, some features that we as a as a provider and we see the the problems of the operators uh, also like trying to to create and uh, to offer to the market first of all and second actually if we are talking about the long vision 
uh, my uh, ideal world is uh, to you know to transform gambling into gaming and to create uh, the life and the environment where we can uh, play slots see uh, uh, watch videos uh, like on youtube or on netflix we can bet uh, we can uh, play uh, computer games like uh, arcades uh, fifa we can play dota world of uh, tanks uh, world of warcraft etc within one one whole entertainment uh, environment so basically that is no there is no let's say uh, serious uh, uh, dividing between like uh, gaming and gambling because everything is gaming everything is in, to to entertain the people and uh, this should be like considered as a as a one line you know and our our idea is to come uh, into point where software provides like the solutions for entertainment in general so this is the the the, the bright vision well i love it Ivan. uh thank you so much for today and uh, i consider myself lucky to be one of the few people together with uh, Vital vitalik buterian of course that i've had the pleasure to uh, interview so uh, thank you so much for taking the time today Ivan, and uh, best of luck in the future thank you pierre very much for the good interview and uh, good luck to iGaming next uh, i i think the, the the project is brilliant and uh, you know like Brilliant people can't uh, found uh, not brilliant projects. So from this perspective, <laughs> I, I really like. I mean, I really like the the project itself, and uh, I wish you super big success. Thank you so much, Ivan. Thank you. See you next time. Bye bye.